Now that we have an overall idea of how the user interface in AutoCAD is set up, I'd like to talk a little bit more about workspaces, the idea of palettes, and touch on toolbars a little bit. So as I mentioned, um, right now I'm looking at the drafting and annotation workspace in AutoCAD. And I showed in the last video that if we you know, flip this to a different one, our experience, the way that we work with AutoCAD is different. So for example, if I was going to be doing some 3D modeling, I might want to change it to a different workspace that was really set up for what I want to do. It's not necessary uh, because in AutoCAD we have different ways of getting to tools, whether it be typing them in, um, using the full name or a shortcut, or we can use toolbars, we can use palettes, there's a lot of different options. But the workspace is a nice way to save our um, settings. So um, I'm going to change it back to drafting and annotation so we're all on the same page. Okay, so one thing I'd like to point out is that if we go to the word view, so up under our tabs where we have home and insert, go over to view, you'll see that we have a list of palettes over here near the right side. Uh, for those of you that have used CAD before, uh, you'll be used to these palettes. The most common ones that you might use would be tool palettes, for example, but most likely the properties palette is going to be a big one. Okay, so the properties palette gives us all of the information about different things that are going on in our particular drawing. So if I just happen to, you know, click on something on my screen, you'll see that's giving me the information about this, or I could click on something else and it might tell me that it, you know, it varies. I have two particular things selected, for example. Um, so there's a lot of different options here. We'll be getting into that a lot more. That's called a palette. There's other ones in here that you might use, like the Design Center, the uh, Layers Property Palette. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different options. You'll see that once you grab one of these, it, it'll go in different places on your screen. They're all movable. So if I just grab mine on this little bar here, you'll see that I can move it anywhere. This is going to um, you know, it's going to depend a little bit on your monitor, if you're on a laptop or if you have a large monitor, or if you're lucky enough to have two monitors, um, where you're going to put this. So you'll see that I can dock it by just pulling it off to one side of the screen. It'll kind of disappear in a way, and when I let go, you'll see that it's docked to the side, so it's kind of stuck in there. Okay. If I grab it by this gray bar, and it's usually pretty safe to grab it over by these dots, and pull it, now it's it's loose again. I could also dock it to the right side and you'll see when I get over there how it's switched and now it's on that side of the screen. So I could dock it on either side. We also have the options, and I'll just pull this out so we can see. If I click right here where it says auto hide, I'll just you know pull it over so you can see how that works. Oop, too far. I can have it say auto hide so that when I'm working on my drawing, it's just this thin narrow bar. Then if I hover my mouse over it, it will actually expand so that I can go in, make changes, do whatever I want to do, and then when I move my mouse away, it will shrink up again. That can be really handy. Some people like that, some people don't. I can also go in and change some different things about it by clicking this little button right here and I can change the size, I can say I want it to, to dock or not, which side the anchor is, left or right, and some of that will just change depending on how you're moving it around. I can also change the transparency and some people find this really useful by saying that, you know what, maybe I don't want that to be solid but I want that to be a little bit transparent it would allow me to work through the menu and see what's behind it, and that's kind of nice. But I could also say that when I roll over it, I would like it to be solid. I'll say, sure, okay. So I can work, but once my mouse gets close to it, oh, 
I can actually see it and then work in there. So it allows me to have access to that palette but see what's going on you know, behind it. So if I moved my drawing behind there, you can see how that could be handy. If you don't like that, I can just come in and say that I would like that all to be solid. Okay. And I can simply get rid of that by hitting that little X, for example. So those are all of the palettes. If I'd like to open one again, you know, I could just say properties, you know, and maybe I want to dock that on the side. I can also come in and make it wider or narrower just by hovering my mouse over the edge and dragging it one way or the other. So there's just so many ways to modify the user interface in AutoCAD. So other than just those properties, we might want to come in and use some toolbars. For those of you that are new to CAD, you might be thinking, well, what's a toolbar? What's the difference? Just for an example, if I come up and say, in my workspace, instead of being a drafting annotation, what if I go to AutoCAD Classic? If I change it to the classic view, you'll see that this actually looks quite a bit different than the ribbon system that we've been working in. So up until um, I think 2008, but I might be wrong, this is what AutoCAD really kind of looked like. These are toolbars. So we have these long strips and they all have um, you know, things in common. So kind of like the draw menu, we will have different toolbars associated with different functions. So what we have in the draw menu now would be basically on this toolbar right here, the draw toolbar. Okay, and for some people, this is how they learned CAD, this is what they're comfortable with, this is what they want to use. So you'll see that we still have, you know, the palettes and things, but we also have a basic toolbar system and no ribbon. You also see here is our menu, the file edit, and so on. If I just change that back to drafting and annotation, the newer interface for CAD, we can actually do a little bit of both. We can get the best of both worlds. So I'm going to go to view, and then way over on the right, you'll see there's the option for toolbars. If I click on that, we will have different toolbars that we can select from. What we're going to be looking for is the AutoCAD toolbars. There is a whole series of toolbars available to you, so I encourage you to play around with them. Um, you know, and sometimes I find that you know they can be really useful. Okay, so maybe I'll just grab, just for the sake of it, I'll grab the Draw toolbar. And when I do that, it appears on my screen. So I can grab that little um, dotted line and move it around you'll see that I can snug it up under the ribbon and it will actually stay right in there. So I can you know, scoot that over. I could go into toolbars again, maybe grab something about, um, oh, maybe properties, for example. So here's a properties toolbar. And that one went below. And you'll see that that's starting to really shrink up my, my viewport, my drawing area. So I can grab that and I could move it over here. Grab another one. Doesn't really matter. Maybe I'll do um, layers and so on. It will actually allow you to put them in so they're going off the screen. So if you're going to do something like that, just keep in mind that's what you're doing because sometimes that can be a little frustrating. We can also put them on the side and have them be vertical. So they can be horizontal or vertical, and they can float. If you want to get rid of them, when they're floating, you can just grab that X and click it, and that will get rid of them. Okay? You might be wondering, well, why would I want those toolbars? Well, sometimes it's nice to always have the toolbars available to you, because notice when you toggle to different tabs on the ribbon, they stay. So, you know, if I'm going to be using these drawing commands a lot, but also maybe the view commands, then I could keep this on view and then keep these here, you know, because anytime I want a line, I might have to go back here if I'm not typing it in. So it's just a personal preference. If you get a workspace set up that you really like, you can actually save this so you don't have to redo it every time you would open up AutoCAD. So I can just come up to my little workspace menu here and I can say, save current as. 
then I could come in and say, I will call this one demo, save, and now my workspace is called demo. So if I go back to drafting an annotation, you'll see that those are gone. But you know, if I today, tomorrow, six months from now, want to go back to that demo workspace, I can go in and find it. So that's a really, really handy thing.